Uh, got it. Got it. Praise the Lord. Yeah. God bless you, brethren. Thank you, Father God. Let us pray. Let us start our morning with um with giving thanks. Let all things give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning me and concerning you. So we give thanks, Father. Father, we just oh Lord, your word teaches me. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Father God, you are our God that has supplied all our need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You sent your word to heal us and deliver us from everything that we did not know and everything that you are wanting us to know. Father God, uh, well, you're delivering us from things that we thought we knew and now you're, you're um, giving us the answers by way of your word to help us in every need that the, uh, that is mentioned in this world today. So, Father, I commend our ways afresh unto you. I thank you, Father God, for our brethren here that are gathered together with us in your name, the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth, and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, Jesus Christ is ruler, Jesus Christ has taken the authority um, to do the things that he is wanting to do in our lives to the glory of God, our Father. So, Lord, we give you praise. We give you thanks for without you, we are nothing. Without your word, we are nothing. I thank you, Father God, for um, opening our eyes of our understanding to, to receive your word. Um, your word teaches me in Romans 10, verse 10 um, or 9, that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, we believe in our heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, we are saved. So, Father, I thank you for saving us in our hearts even this morning, for saving us in our hearts, Father God, to um, hear through your word, Father God, through your Holy Spirit, the things that you are wanting us to hear. Father God, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall oh, never perish, yeah. neither shall any man pluck them out of my hands. So, Father, I thank you, Lord, for enlarging the place of our tents. That we're not perishing with our thoughts from yesterday or the day before, or whenever, uh, whatever conversation that may have been had. I thank you, Father God, that we shall not perish, but we are going to continue to have everlasting life and that you're going to continue to lead us into life everlasting, Father God. I thank you, Lord, for our eyes to see what the Spirit is saying to us. I thank you, Father God, that our eyes of our understanding those are the eyes that you are, are talking to us about, our eyes of our understanding being enlightened, that we may be able to see the path that is set before us. Um, Lord, your word has taught us, Father God, that before they spring forth, you'll, you'll tell us of them. And so, Father God, our eyes of our understanding will be uh, wide open to the path that you have chosen for us, that we may walk and not be weary, that we may run and not faint. I thank you, Father God, for... Um, your, your word that teaches me that uh, for our feet, Father God, that wherever our foot should tread, you you have blessed us, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for the um, uh, the gospel of peace that you have blessed us with, Father God, that our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, that we may go forth, Father God, and all, into all the world and preach the glad tidings of good things, the gospel, Father God, the revelation of your word that you have blessed us with, that, Father God, when we when we take your gospel out, Father God, that, Lord, it will no, be, no longer be uh, us shaking the dust off our feet because, Father God, I thank you and I believe by faith that no, so shall your word be, Father God, in the newness of the spirit that shall go forth out of our mouths, the word that shall not return into you void, but it will accomplish that which you please, and it shall prosper in the thing where to you sent it. Father God, it's not void because, Father God, you have filled the void already. You have filled the void with your word, Father God, in each one of our hearts. You have filled the void that, Father God, that the Holy Spirit is able to work now and effectually make our prayers and everything else that we do established, Father God, and sealed, Father God, that uh, there is no weapon that it will be informed against us. No, uh, and every tongue that hath risen up against any of us in judgment, we condemn because, Father God, this is what you've given us. This is your inheritance that you have left us with. And so, Father God, I thank you, Lord, for, um, Father God, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he shall, uh, 
shall have our everlasting life, Father God. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in Jesus shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Um, he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Father, I thank you, Lord, that we believe your word. We believe that, Father God, in you is life, and the life is the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. So, Father, I thank you, Lord, that we will not die with the negativity, with the, with not understanding the truth, with uh, not knowing where we are going and the purpose for where we are going, but that, Father God, you were, you have given us life to be able to produce uh, to prophesy our future and, and prophesy everything that is good for the use of edifying Father God. I thank you and bless you, Jesus, for this day. I thank you for let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. I thank you, Father God, that you have given us the mind of Christ. When we preach your word and, and the Holy Spirit comes and washes uh, our minds from anything that we have, may have been meditating on. Um, Father God, that your word has come and cleared the way, cleared the path, Father God, that we have a new slate to work with, Father God, and that we can continue to build ourselves up on the, on your most, on, on our most holy faith, holy faith. And so, Father, you know, once again, I just thank you, Father God, that you are not a man that you should like, nor the son of man that you should repent or take away what you've already blessed us with. Have you not said, and will you not do it? Have you not spoken, and will you not make it good? And I thank you, Father, for every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Cometh down from the Father lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Father, we just uh, thank you for preparing the, your way, Father God, that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter in. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Daddy. Amen. Thank you, Father. I was um, just hearing what you were saying, Sis, earlier on about, um, you know, some people, well, how I received it was that there's, you know, there's some people that may be thinking on death or dying, okay? That that may have been a thought that's been going through their mind. And that's, and praise the Lord for, you know, this is the importance of the word of God is going to help us and them and whoever else uh, that may not be fellowshipping with us. It, the word of God helps us to, Understand who Jesus is and what his purpose is. Understand who God is and um, why he's Jesus. Understand who the Holy Spirit is and what his purpose is. We have the greatest gift of all is the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. However, the Holy Spirit can only help us if we have the word of God. It's it's like it's like a, a pen without ink. Hey. <laughs> hey. Um, so the word of God is the order. That's the order. In the beginning, in the beginning, John 1, 1 is the word or was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. That's the order. Otherwise, what's going to, well, we know, I won't go on about what's going to happen. What I'm going to say is in Jesus's life. And so the importance of the word of God is to give us the life that Jesus so wants to give us, to give us the answers that we may not have um, um, answers to at that time, to to be able to guide us, you know, the Holy, so that the Holy Spirit can guide us uh, in the way everlasting. See, see, as He thinketh in His heart, if our hearts, when we when we receive before we receive Jesus. Our heart was disobedient. Our heart was in a place of um, of unbelief or doubt or error or you know, because Jesus said, "I am the way." That's why. That's why before Jesus. That's what I'm saying. Before Jesus, or the word is saying, before Jesus, we there was a way which seemed right unto a man. We thought we were okay. We thought, you know, um, oh, is it, this is life. This is life. 
Well, life can only be given by Jesus or through Jesus. And that's where a lot of people, their minds need to be renewed with, uh, with the answers. You know, what is life? What is life? It's not the life that we once knew. That's not life at all. That's living or surviving for some, you know. But life is in Jesus, and he's the one that's going to show us the importance of, of who he is. Um, you know, and, and the word has taught us and continues to teach us that John chapter 1, verse 14. The word, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Now, remembering this portion of scripture was back then. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. See, we weren't here when Jesus was born. Neither were we here when Jesus had resurrected. So this is giving us a, this was a, um, this is history. This was, you know, Jesus back then. So in the word, uh, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only, as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And that, that there was ministered unto us by a preacher. A preacher came and shared that to us, and yet Jesus had already resurrected. But in order for us to understand and to receive life, we had to come this way, according to the scriptures. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, he says, no man, no one cometh unto the Father but by me. And so in order for us to know and understand what life is and was and is to come, we needed to know who Jesus is. Now, Jesus for us, according to the scriptures, is the word, is the word of God. Amen. And so we've heard these scriptures time and time again. The but when I, you know, when I hear something like, you know, there's um there's there may be, you know, people are are thinking on death or dying. That alerts me to come back with the answer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. Who is Jesus is the word of God. See, sin is not the problem. Death is not the problem because Jesus has already died on the cross for our sins. You know, he took, when he died, he res but he rose again. Psalms 119, verse 11, it says, Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah, there you are. Psalms 119, verse 11. It says, um, Thy word have I hid in my heart. See, the word needs to be hid in the heart. If the word's not hid in the heart, then what's the heart pondering upon? The heart will only think, you know, as he thinketh in his heart. So is he. So if if the heart is thinking on, or if the mind is thinking what the heart, what's in the heart, and it could be death or dying, or you know, as an example, I'm just using that as an example. That's what's going to come out of the mouth. But the Lord is very quick, and he he wants us to get the word of God on the heart, the word of life on the heart, not just any word. The word of life. If there's if there's a uh, a death happening there, like a, a the thoughts of the mind is is just um, separation, because that's what death is—a separation from what God is wanting to say to us. That's what death is. Then we need to put the word of life in the heart. You know, get the scriptures of life and start sowing them. Jesus said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life." See, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. We've got some a sound, a solid foundation to come back to, and the Holy Spirit can work with that in whatever situation or place that we may be in. So the word in Psalms 119, verse 11, it says, Thy word have I hid in my heart. So it's not saying, you know, hide. He, what he's saying is that get the word and put it on the heart. So in a time uh, of need, you've got something to come back with. Don't just hide it there and not speak it or say anything. You've got to put it in first, you know. He's saying, put, hide the word of God on the heart so that when you're ready, you know, when you need that word, that specific uh, faith word, you can come back. You know, you can come back with that word. So the word of I hid in my heart, why? 
so that I may not sin against thee. That's what the, uh, the brother uh, uh, David, son of David said. So what? So that I do not sin against thee. So I do not have these thoughts that we, ha that we had in the world. Now, just quickly, when we received Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, and we received what that Holy Spirit of promise, what happened was everything before Christ, before we received that, our, our old life had been blotted away. As far as God is concerned, he blotted and he gave us a clean slate to work with, a, a clean slate. But he also understood, our daddy also understands that we were all those years in the world and even though the Lord had, had uh, forgiven us, we had all those years in the world, those years, um, we, we, and we had the opportunity, we have the opportunity to start again we need to fill that void. See, it was a void. It's a void. All those years is a void. We need to fill that void with the word of God, with life, with joy, with peace, with goodness, whatever um, we desire. Because if that void's not full, then the thief will try and come in again and bring, your, bring to your remembrance about the things you used to do or what you used to say. Or what manner, you know, what what you what type of person you were, and yet God loved you. He loved you and he loved me. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but he shall have a life ever have everlasting life. So that our daddy was is way ahead of us. He's thinking way ahead, you know, he's God, he's our daddy. Jesus is way ahead of us. The Holy Spirit is way ahead of us. And where we are. Or, you know, at, at, right at the beginning, if you like, for some, what he wants us to do is make sure, you know, just get the word of God on the heart. you got to start off there. You can't can't come in halfway and think, oh, yeah, all I have to do is listen to that minister, listen to that minister, listen to that minister, and I'm going to take it on board. That's beautiful because it's changing your environment. But when that minister's not there or when you're home by yourself or when you're in that, that place or attempted or, you know, because the, the, the thief is uh, he's roaming around trying to look for someone that he can uh, entice with the old nature, with the speaking of, oh, guess what we used to do before, you know, da 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 da. And then your next minute the entertaining happens, and next minute the conversation happens, you know, and you speak things, you know, people speak things out. But, but the Lord is wanting us, he's wanting to fill that void, that void. And the only way he can do it is through Jesus, is the word of God. Jesus is the one that fills the void. The Holy Spirit is the one that performs it and makes it happen. Praise the Lord. So, yeah, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. The importance of the word, and I'll keep preaching this because when, you know, when I hear matters like that, it's like, yeah, okay, let's go back to the beginning again. Let's go through and do a bit of a washing. Let's go through and encourage the brethren about, come on, Get, you know, just keep going in the word. Take those scriptures, whatever the scriptures are that have edified, encouraged, exhorted you. Take those scriptures and start sowing them. Start going over them. Start cleansing the mind uh, from all unrighteousness, you know, from, from that separation. See, Jesus said, um, you know, he's passed. We're passed from death, from, from death unto life. We're passed from death unto life. We're passed from cursing to blessing. We pass from that. Uh, Deuteronomy 30, verse 19, the word of God teaches us there. I call heaven and earth to record this day. There's a record recording that's been that's taken place. I, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, he says, against you. That I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Now, I, you know, we know that that was before Jesus resurrected. That was before Jesus resurrected. And, and so there was, a, there was a, um, an exhortation back there, but they, they, those scriptures can also be for, or are also for us for today. So we take the good and leave the not so good. We take what is going to edify and encourage us so that we can continue to um, walk according to what the Lord has said. You know, I love I love John 10.10. 10. The word says, you know, the thief come only cometh but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. 
that that there that's his attributes but it's only to those that let him it's not just to everybody it's only to those that uh are still growing because he'll try and 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 do that especially with babies who are still you know having a titty they're still on the milk of the word he'll try and come in with whatever he can but you know the only way he's going to be able to do that if we open our mouths and let out what's actually going on in the heart. It's giving him the power. That's the only way the thief can do that. And that's why the Lord just does not just want to change our heart, but he wants to change our tongue. He wants to change our eyes, what we're seeing, what we're hearing, you know, our mindset, our path, our, you know, wherever we're, we're going, um, journeying, you know, whatever our journey is. That's what the Lord is wanting to change. He's wanting to help us change the old nature. And that's by way of the word life. See, he's come that we may have life and that we may have it more abundantly. So the thief only cometh but for to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come. I've come over him. He has no authority upon any of us. When Jesus comes, when the word of God comes in, quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing him to divide him, he'll divide it. He'll go, get thief, you get thief, you have no authority. We will say, you get thief, you have no authority upon my mind or my tongue or my eyes nor my ears and whatever else, you know, that um, he has been trying to still kill. Yeah, it's death and life, uh, uh, Proverbs 18, 19. The word teaches us there that death and life are in the power of the tongue. See, the power of our tongue to speak life and blessing, wow, that there is what we're doing in predict, pred, uh, predicting our future, running into the name of the Lord so that we're saved, you know, we're blessed. I wanted to do a bit of reading, um, and it was opening our eyes of understanding to the word of God. Um, oh, actually, Revelation 3, 12, uh, 2, I, I just want to touch on this because uh, of what, you know, where we uh, started on. Revelation 3, verse 2. And the, and the, um, Jesus was speaking to the angel of the church in Sardis. In Sardis. He said, right. These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. He says, I know thy works, that thou hast the name that thou livest and art dead. Oh, was it this one here? Yeah. Verse 2, the Lord says, Jesus said, be watchful. What, what are we watching? What are our eyes entertaining? You know, what are we seeing and what are what are our minds entertaining and our ears? What are they hearing? Yeah. What is our uh, our hearts indicting? He says, I know thy works that thou hast a name that livest and art dead. Be watchful, he said, and strengthen the things which remain. Whenever, whenever you're in a situation that um may may seem negative or may seem you know, I, you know, words that are not going to edify. Then for me, he says, um, you know, for me, it's continuing the word. If I continue in the word, if I continue to hear the word, if I continue to meditate on the word, if I continue to speak the word, if I continue to um, do the what the word is saying to me to do. The word says, then are you my disciples. God, Jesus said, then are you my follower. You're following Jesus. In other words, you're going to follow life. And you're going to live. Then are you my disciples indeed. And you will know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. See. The truth will do that. He will make you free. Free from all those lies. All the past. The things that did not benefit us or edify us. That's what he's going to do. And in, and it continues in this way. When I just read it, the full scripture now. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. That are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Yeah, perfect. Because, see, we cannot serve two masters. We can love the one and, you know, we love the one. That's where the Lord is, uh, what the Lord is teaching us. Love me. Love the word. Love the word with all thy heart. You know, uh, Mark 12, Mark 12, 29. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God 
with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. In other words, all that is within me, let us praise his name. You know, let us love him, not just in word, but in, in deed, but in uh, word only, but in deed and in truth. You know, loving the Lord with all our heart. Then we're able to love our neighbor as ourselves. And how does that look? What he's saying is that when we love the word, then we can give scriptures, the word of God that we know, to others, to others, to strengthen them, to bring them, uh, to bring them to Jesus, because Jesus can only come by way of the Word of God. And then that's why you know I'm blessed because you know with our sister, she uh, she's given four scriptures out to uh, Maxima Harvest, praise the Lord, and and um, a Team Hustle. This is what we're wanting to hear back. We want to hear that they've been faithful with the little, with what they've been given. That's following Jesus. Otherwise, you follow man and perish, according to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 17. Let me just double check the, the findings. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5. This is just a, this, this part here, just a knowledge for us so that we understand. Verse 5, thus saith the Lord, cursed is the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm and whose heart departeth from the Lord. See, that's the heart that is thinking on death or uh, anger or you know, anything that is not going to be uh, encouraging to you or beneficial for you in the future. For he shall be like the heath in the desert and shall not see when the good cometh. Because see, we haven't got the pastor or the teacher or the evangelist or the um, prophet or whoever ministry we've been watching. We haven't got them. They, they're, not, they're not there anymore for that time, for that, you know. But we do have Jesus. We have Jesus on our heart who's able to, to heal us and deliver us immediately, immediately. See, so for he shall be like a heat in the desert and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness and a salt land and not inhabited. Verse 7, and I love this part. I love this part because this is life. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. See, whose hope the Lord is. In verse 8 it says, for he shall be as a tree planted by waters that spread it out her roots by the river and shall not see when he cometh. But her heart, her, but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Beautiful, eh? See, this is the reason why the order is the word of God first. The word of God first. Get the word of God on the heart. Because he's the one that's going to save us from our sin. She, she shall, uh, Matthew 1, 21, She shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he... See, it's Jesus, the word of God, that's going to save us from our sin. Behold, a virgin shall be with, uh, yeah, yeah, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Matthew 1, 21. And so it's the, it's the word of God that's going to help us and save us in that time of need. You know, whenever, whenever a situation may arise, we can run into the name of the word, the, the Lord, and be saved or safe. This is, you know, there's not many scriptures that I'll bring out this morning because, um, you know, the, the enlightening of our eyes uh, have already happened. But the, the urgency for, for all of us is stay on the word of God. You know, that's our foundation, is build our house on the word of God so that when the rains descend, the uh, floods come, the winds blow, because they will, they will, then we're not going to see that. We're not going to see that. What we're going to see is what our eyes are, which have been enlightened. What is the word of God saying? What report are we hearing? What are we going to, you know, are we going to say to that mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea? Are we going to say to that cyclone or wind, you know, you stay out to sea, cyclone. You have no authority here. Yeah. You're going to say to the, uh, the sun, okay, go down now, you know, like, um, go dim now because it's too hot you know things like that we can even the word of god is preparing us for even the elements of the world even the elements 
he he prepared you know when we we're in the word of god then the word of god who is our jesus is going to show us the great and mighty things that we didn't know anything about he's the one that's going to open up the windows of heaven and pour us out blessings that there shall not be room enough to receive them and we're going to see those blessings we're going to know when to expect them you know all these things and that's what's been happening because see our jesus is coming again and he's coming quickly and i had a conversation with one of the brethren today and he believes that even within the next 10 years even even within the next 10 years you know that's what he's believing for praise the lord Praise the Lord. But he's also having his conversation with the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit can only, he's the one that's going to um, show us things to come according to John 16, 13. How bet when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide us into all truth for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak and he will show us things to come. So when we're, when we're sharing a journey of our own that the Lord has brought us through, we can share that. The Holy Spirit is leading and guiding us to share that, to be able to show us um, by way of the word, our, you know, our journey. See how Jesus took, brought us through this. He brought us through this time, you know, because we trusted in him. We trusted in the word that's on our heart. We trust in the word that the preacher preach to us we receive that we we believe that word that the preacher well we receive that word that the preacher had preached to us we took that word and we sowed the word to our heart we just didn't leave it there because when you leave it there then you're not going anywhere the wind will just yeah snatch it away and take it we we receive we, we receive the word that the preacher had said oh thank you daddy i'm going to take that scripture and i'm going to sow it to my heart because it's going to save me in a time of need yeah, he's going to save me in the time of need. Um, so now we'll go to Luke 24, 27, please. I've had a beautiful day today. Um, you know, it truly has been a, a blessing to open our mouths and preach the word. And, you know, we've had a, a beautiful um, cleansing, a beautiful um, sharing you know, sharing one with another and edifying the body of Christ. Uh, Luke 24, 20, and I'm going to read from, oh, to my, yeah. can I, um, praise the Lord, Luke 24, let's read from verse one. I haven't done a, you know, I haven't done, we haven't done a bit of a reading for a little bit um, on our page. Uh, verse 20, uh, chapter 24, verse 1. Now, upon the first day of the week, now this is talking about when uh, Jesus had died and he was, um, his his resurrection, he had, uh, you know, already been, um, he had already resurrected and the disciples were going to visit him. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. Now, uh, thank you, dear. And it came to pass, as they were much crippled, and as they were afraid, and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Why seek ye the living among the dead? Now, our, the, the disciples, which are very much like who we are today when we come to Jesus, you know, we're following our Jesus. And, and but it's how we, you know, what, um, what's our journey? You know, what's our journey? Are we, here's the question, you know, sometimes, well, there has been a time, especially if you're in your very early uh, years of um, receiving Jesus and, and you know, um, partaking in the milk of the word, you know, just growing. You know, there may have been times that uh, we may have found ourselves in the situation where, you know, running to, running to, um, uh, 
Yeah, thank you, Daddy. You know, I'm not trying to bring any church down or fellowship or any anyone at all. Um, what the word is teaching me here is that we we need to look at the resurrected Jesus, not the Jesus that died on the cross. Yes, he died on yes, our you know, but it's not taking away what our Jesus actually did for us either. Not at all. Not at all. We know the pain and suffering that our Jesus uh, did for you and I on the cross. You know, praise the Lord. And and because of that, He we were able to um we were able to come to know Him as our personal Lord and Savior, knowing that you know all the things that Jesus did for us, the shame, the anger, the hate, the every curse that um, mankind were under, he took, he took upon the tree. Every sickness that people have uh, heard and perhaps some may have been part of, Jesus actually took that upon the tree, that we be dead to that, to sin. Let's see, that's the separation, that's death. That we be dead to that, should live unto righteousness. But the only way we can live unto righteousness is if we get to know the word of God, if we get to know Jesus more and the Holy Spirit who Jesus sent for us. See, that there, there's the changeover. It was just Jesus died on the cross for us and we were, and that was the only way we could uh, enter into uh, the blessings. Jesus died for us, but he didn't stay there. And when people don't understand that, then a lot of them can stay there. They can stay there at the cross or in that era or before the cross. They'll never be able to move ahead without getting the word of God on their heart and letting and, and allowing the Holy Spirit of promise to guide them, to lead and guide them into all truth. You, you know, people will stay there. That's the reason why these gonna be could be a death. That's the only reason why there could be a death because they're not, um, the word hasn't been, you know, is it working for them or they haven't put the word of God on, on the heart and they're not working the word. So praise the Lord. I'll read from verse, um, and so, and they found the stone, verse two, and they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus, see, and it, because he had risen. See, but people are still looking for the Jesus. They're still running here and there. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Praise the Lord. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Why are you still there? Why are you not listening to what the word and what Jesus has, has already spoken? You know, he's the resurrection. He's the life. Verse 6, he is not here, but is risen. Remember? Remember how the preacher spake? <laughs> or how he spake to you when he was yet in Galilee? Saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. And they remembered the words. See, when we remember the word that the Lord has spoken to us to preach to our inner man, to preach to our heart, and we call upon that word, we're remembering what the word is saying to us. We're remembering that we've been paid, we've been paid in full. We're, be, we're remembering that um, we've re been redeemed by the blood of Jesus and by the word of his testimony. We start to remember who we are now, not the old man, not the old man who's on the cross, but the new man that is in heaven seated at the right hand of the throne of God. We remember who we are in Christ. We remember our rights. And that there is to edify the body of Christ and, and to bring people unto Jesus when we remember. See, we remember. And so in verse 9, and turn from the and he turned from the sepulchre and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother, James and other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Then arose Peter, praise the Lord for our brother Peter, and ran unto the sepulchre and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed, 
wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called the Emmaus, which was on Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. <laughs> but their eyes were holding that they should not know him. Why? Because they were looking at the situation. They were looking at, um, they weren't believing what Jesus had taught them. They weren't believing. And um, and he said unto them, oh, what manner of communications are these that you have one to another as you walk in a sad? So they were walking, that the communications were making them sad. They weren't, you know, uh, you know, like when, when my darling, and I, I'll bring this, uh, you know, because this is my journey. When my darling went home to the Lord, yes, I was so sad. I was very sad. And that sadness could have led me to death. It could have. But the Lord loved me too much because he knew that he, that the Holy Spirit of promise was able to resurrect that word that I had hidden in my heart. And if I hadn't, if I didn't have the word of God on my heart, if I honestly, if I did not have the word of God on the heart, our daddy could not have helped me. He could not have helped me. But I had the word of God on my heart. And you know, it was that word, the word that I ministered and I preached. And I, and I, I took it to, her, to our, my daddy, our daddy's remembrance. And I said, you know, you know, he tells, t teaches us, declare that thou mayest be justified. You know, bring me into remembrance of my word. That's what he was saying to me. And not because he wanted to know, because, but he wanted me to open my mouth and predict my future. And so I was preaching the word of God to our, our daddy, you know, and saying, Daddy, your word says this. Daddy, your word says this. See, and it was, Jesus was being resurrected. It was, he was, um, he was being the resurrection and the life in my life. I was able to preach myself out of the situation of sadness. And the Lord word, you know, the word that says, blessed are in Matthew 5, he says, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Before I started preaching the word, I saw that scripture and I went, how can I be comforted? How? How can I be comforted? And yet all in this time, my communication, which, you know, what manner of communications are these in verse 17? My, my, my communications I was having was with the Lord. I was talking to him. Oh, yes, I was angry. Yes, I was sad. Yes, I was in grief. And and yet the Lord loved me because He loved He loved the fact that I had I had the Word of God on my heart at that time, and He was able to help me through this. Yeah. And in verse eighteen, and the one of them whose name was Cleophas answering said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which have come to pass in these days? You know, there was a bit of, uh, um, not turmoil, but. Well, it was too much reasoning because, you know, this is, there's a man that's come along who's um, asking the question, you know, what are you talking about? What manner of communications are you you having? And they're thinking, what are you talking about? Don't you know what's been going on on a day-to-day -day basis? Haven't you not heard? You know, haven't the scriptures already foretold what was going to happen to this that man, Jesus, you know, even if they were living in the law or the Old Testament or the old times because that's what they were doing at that time. Yeah, and and this is what he's saying. He says, "Well, what manner of communications are you having? Having I'm the resurrection, you know. I'm Jesus said I'm the resurrection of life. He had already prepared them, but they hadn't listened. They hadn't done what he had asked them to do." In verse nineteen, and he said unto them, "What things?" And they said unto him, "Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty and did they, they they this is what they're telling Jesus." He was mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. See, they were still there. They were still at that place. But we trusted, it's saying, verse 21, but we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. Wow. 
you know, the Lord met them where they were at. He He sent messages. He He sent messages to tell them, you know, what um that 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 our Jesus was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even as so even so as the woman had said, but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, "Oh fools, wow, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken." Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, Jesus expounded unto them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village where they went and made as though he would have gone further. But, you know, I was, I was um, in verse 29, but they constrained him saying, abide with us for it is to, toward evening and the day is far spent. See, what, what this shows me here is that, yes, the Lord appeared back unto them in a different form. There are many ministers and preachers out there that are sharing the word of God. They come in a different form, yet they're preaching Jesus. They're preaching what Jesus has said to them. And it's the same message. It's the same message, you know, for those that are preaching what the Lord is saying to them. And, it, and, and so... And Jesus had already prepared them and told them, yet when, you know, someone came in a different form in verse 30, and it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them. Verse 31, and their eyes were opened and they knew him. See, why? Because they had been sitting at the feet of Jesus. You know, he had um, he had prepared them, prepared the way. There were preachers that were preaching. He was they were preaching the same message that Jesus himself was preaching. What happened? Their eyes were open because the Holy Spirit was able to break every yoke, break every yoke and prepare them and, to, you know, and show them uh, the great and mighty things that, that they didn't know anything about. And then he vanished out of their sight, just like that, vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way? And while he opened to us the scriptures, praise the Lord. And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them saying, the Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Sister Maria, Maria Sister Shriti, Brother Dean, Sister Sharon, the Lord has appeared unto us and showing us the way you know life everlasting psalms 119 verse 105 it says thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path the lord is showing us something you know many things here for our journey our personal journey we can only speak the other things which we have both seen and heard you know that we can deliver unto unto the whoever is um you know, wanting to hear whoever's ears are open to what the Holy Spirit is saying and whoever, who, whoever's eyes are um, seeing what the Holy Spirit is saying. In our journey, we all have different journeys. The Lord will still meet us where we're at, but the order is the word of God. The order is, you know, the, um, the seed is the word of God according to um, uh, Mark 4. Oh, 40, that's the so so of the word. Luke 8, 11, you know, the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. So that seed needs to grow. Yeah. And so when we when we sow the scriptures, when we sow the word, the so and so of the word, that's us, that's our tongue. Sow the scriptures so that, um, you know, we don't give, that the thief has no more authority or power or think he has any power because he doesn't, he's defeated. But the only way that we can keep him where he needs to be is by not giving him any power to do so. So, power, you know, death and life and the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So, praise the Lord. You know, um, who's, who's, who have we got here? Yes. Hallelujah, oh, brother, sister. Yeah. So, praise the Lord. You know, my encouragement to us here, you know, now, brethren, um, I commend you to God. I commend you to the word of God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up, to build us up, because that's what the word of God is there for, to build us up and to give us an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. So 
everyone that's been cleansed by the word of God and is walking in a victorious life and walking according to what his purpose is for their lives, praise the Lord, we are there. Well, that's what we've been given. That's what the Lord is uh, helping us do. So that's in um, Acts chapter 20, verse 32. Now, brethren, I commend you to God. See? And so I commend, you know, I commend uh, each and every one of us here to the Lord. Um, you know, we've heard, uh, and it's been, it's quick and powerful. It's simple. It's simple. The scriptures are simple um, to encourage us. Stay on the word of God. Take those four, four or so scriptures that you've been given and just continue in them. Just continue in them. When you've got them all on the heart, ask for another one. Get some, you know, get another one. He that uh, soweth or speaketh. Uh, bountifully shall reap also bountifully that's what we you know that's what the Lord wants so he can just do the great and mighty things that we didn't know anything about so he can enlarge the place of our tents you know that we may stretch forth the curtains of our habitation so we can see wow you know this is amazing you know I didn't know this yeah uh, you know we the joy of the Lord is our strength we the Lord will just take us places that we never have been to never have been to like even naturally too, you know, I'm, I'm speaking spiritually, but even naturally too, he'll take us to places that we've never been to, but he will do it if that's the desire of our heart. Amen. So God bless you, brethren. God bless you. Yeah, just continuing as we're John 8, 31, 32. That's my last scripture. Yeah, if, but that's not for us because we do it. We are doers of the word. If we continue in his word, then are we his disciples indeed, and we will know the truth. <laughs> and the truth shall make us free. <laughs> Babies running around. Yeah. And and that's you know, our daddy just wants to free us. He wants to free us from believing whatever is out there, believing what we we um thought, you know, was of a truth and it's not. Yeah. But I say be gentle because <laughs> that's one of the fruits of the spirit gentleness the fruit of the spirit you know the holy spirit he's gentle he's very gentle yeah so yeah praise the lord god bless you does anyone want to share i can't hear anybody but yeah does anyone want to share what the lord has been doing for them or share this or share your scriptures yeah share it here this is our this is our um our training if we can preach here we can preach anywhere yeah, this is our training, training ground. You know, we're here to encourage and to, um, yeah, edify according to the word of God. So I'll leave the, I'll leave the platform open if anyone wants to, um, yeah, share their scriptures. You know, I love hearing the word of God. I love the, yeah, I love the word. It encourages me. Praise the Lord, sis. Hallelujah. You know, I woke up this morning and there was such an urgency. The Lord said to me that somebody was contemplating ending their life. And that's where, sister, I started to give her the message and I didn't give her at all. All I, I only got to, you know, where the Lord was saying to tell them to stop uh, waiting on death, waiting to die. But the Lord had put somebody specifically on my heart and I rang that yeah. person and ministered yeah. the word of, of, of life to them. But throughout yeah. this week, it's been like that. There was a young man who was presented to me and he was looking at ending his life. Yeah. One of our own sisters, she was the same. She was looking at ending her life. But throughout that time, the importance of God's word ministered immediately life and there was a change. The, change, the word changed that environment. Yeah. The word changed the environment. So whose voice are you hearing? And are you ready and prepared for the masters used to be able to? Because God created, he didn't create the problem. He created the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, our Lord Jesus Christ. Because right mm -hmm. at that time, the I was fast asleep. And when he put this particular person on my heart and woke me with that, that's not for me. That wasn't me confessing that. That's right. He wanted me. To be to stand in the gap, and I picked up the phone and rang this person. Yeah. And right in the midst of it all, she said, I didn't want to answer. I said, Jesus loves you. Amen. She had had enough and come to the end of her life. And I could never have known that. 
Yeah. I wasn't even dreaming of it. Amen. I didn't even know if it was her. All I know is the Lord had put her on my heart. And when Jesus. I found her, Jesus was ministered. And my husband witnessed a changeover. Somebody who was at the end of her life, who's now been resurrected. And you know, this is a person who's not only received Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, but who has continued in the word, who attends fellowship, who tithes. So why is she where she's at now? Because of the environment that she chooses to be in. But Jesus came that she might have life and have it more abundantly. So when we hear those, when you hear the word ministering to you, when the Holy Spirit ministers to you, it's to take love. It's to give them life, you know, give them their, their expected end that when you're not. And so when sister, the Jesus and sister opened up with the scripture in Isaiah, um, verse 2, reading from verse 2, 54, 2, you know, that there is strengthening. When you yeah. strengthen, when you put a stake in there and hammer it down, when you put up a tent, put up a tent, oh man, we put up multiple tents and down time we go down to the down to the path, you know, and you put that tent up. I wouldn't even try and bang them in, but I would get somebody who was stronger, my husband, as an example, to make sure that that stake was in physically. Now, spiritually, that's why we attend fellowship, continue in the word minister the word of God, take up all of these scriptures here, Psalms 119 verse 9, verse 11, John 1, 1. Take up the word of God, because that's the importance of God's word, the seed, the word of God. Yeah. So when, when we do hear the calling, immediately we can say, okay, Lord, because that's what we wake up for, purposefully. Every morning I wake up with a purpose. It's to save souls. I'm out there winning souls for Jesus. You know, when the Lord blessed me with a revelation in the book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 23, he told me to take the word of God to the highways and to, to the hedges. And so that's my journey. That's where I'm at. Anybody who has, those who are in the word of God, praise God, hallelujah. God bless them, you know, and what they do. Those who are without the word and who the, who the Lord has put in my path, hallelujah. But we all have a journey. And so that there has become the platform of what, uh, the the foundation, the foundation of what I'm, the, what the Lord has purposed me for, is to take the word of God. So I want to read that scripture to you. It's um, uh, Luke chapter fourteen, verse twenty-three. It's a beautiful portion, beautiful reading, and so we have such, you know, such love for the Father, love for our Lord Jesus, that we want to give this free gift. Just keep giving this free gift to those who don't know Him or haven't got Him. And um, I'll just read, because there's room. You know, we go into a place and there's room. Let's fill up the room. You know, fill up the kingdom of heaven. Verse 22 says, and the servant said, Lord, it is done and thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. Verse 23 says, so the Lord speaking to me. This is what my, the journey for me. The Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in at my house may be filled and you know this morning we heard about how we can fill up our heart fill the barns fill up our storehouse when we bring the tithes which is the word of god thou shalt truly tithe the increase of thy seed that the field bringeth forth year by year that's in deuteronomy 14 22 we're building up our barn or our storehouse we're laying up treasures in heaven you know in, in our hearts because there you there we are there we are there we are your treasure hang on let me just check your heart will be also. It's in um, Luke chapter 12, verse 34. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Then we are ready. So we bring all the ties into the storehouse. Why? That there may be meat. Meat in my house. And prove me now, he would say, the Lord of hosts. See, the Lord wants to prove that he is Lord. Not me. Not man. But he is. That's who we're trusting. Jesus. The word of God that's on our heart. You know, and in, in, in that portion there, he says, prove me now, he was, saith the Lord of hosts, if I not open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And you know what happened? Death got swallowed up in victory. Death was swallowed up in victory. That, these, that she may have life, that he may have life, 
that these one, two, three souls have life, have hope in Jesus Christ. And even if they had to come back, like how our sister taught us, again, to renew their faith, follow after me. Romans 10, verse 9 and 10. Lord Jesus, I confess you with my mouth. Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. I am saved. Bring them back to the beginning. Then what? John 8, 31 and 32. Don't, don't sign them up to any church. There was the encouragement when I spoke to them. I said, now you need to attend fellowship, not any fellowship. Come back to the fellowship of the word of life. Come back this way here. Because I can't attest to what everybody else is preaching out there. But I can attest to what the word has been ministered to me. Bring them back here. Because if, if it had been working for them where they are at now, they would not be in this position. It's clear. The Lord said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So set them on that path. Truly show them the path of life. In him is fullness of joy. And we have fullness of joy in here because we get the answers. Jesus is the answer. And so the word is quick and powerful. Hallelujah. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Then the word encouraged them to take up the sword, which is the word of God. And so the scriptures to lay up those treasures in their heart. John 8, 31 and 32, encouraging them. If you continue my word, then are you my disciple indeed. And you'll know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So not only for the non-believer, but even the believers are contemplating and confessing other because they don't know who they are in Christ. When they come back to know who they are in Christ, by way of the word of God, praise the Lord. The Lord just removes the scale from their eyes. They're no longer blind. You know, he allows them to see what God, you know, his thoughts, God's thoughts, to hear his voice, John 10, 27. My, he, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. They're back on track. There's a circumcision that needs to take place and it's to cut off that which is not edifying to ourselves. I went through a time at home and I needed to, you know, I, I was like, gee, I haven't seen my friends. This was a, you know, I went to the Lord. I said, Daddy, I haven't seen my friends. What are who I regarded as my friends. Every time I've been home, I had this habit of going to see them or blessing them, but I was obedient. The Lord said to me, spoke to me about the circumcision. He said, cut them off. I'll take care of them. You've prayed for them. You love them. Love them in word and in deed. So I did. I never saw them physically. I stayed obedient. I stayed in the spirit. And the Lord kept me. He kept me well. Because who am I serving then? This man here? Because, because why? What was the purpose? There was no reason just to fill the flesh. The lust of the flesh is not of the Father, the Father that I know, but the Spirit is. See, God is the Spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I denied self for Christ, and at the end of it, they will be saved, because greater love has no man than this, than a man who will lay down his life for his friends. One of my friends come to visit me, came to my house. You know, and she... She imparted what she could to bless me, a cup of coffee, a donut, and a pie. And I was in a position to be able to bless her, but I received it with gladness because her heart wanted to give. She wanted to give. And, you know, that was, a, that was beautiful for me. It was beautiful because she was showing her heart condition. And that was it, you know. And I'd never bothered for anybody else or anything else. Only for those that the Lord had put in my heart. And I was a video. Right up until the time I got onto the plane and flew back home. Because my God's work was done. And so there was a there was a learning for me. And I, you know, I searched my heart. And the scripture on my heart that the Lord um, brought forth is in the book of Luke 8.21. He says here, hey. Your mother and your brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it. And see, that was easier for me. So I, I continued. I stayed in that. And that's, that's my perspective now. 
It's my vision. It's my it's my relationship. It's the love that I have, not for for you know for um just because, but because if I know that my my love for the Father and for my for my Jesus is greater, He'll take care of the rest. Yeah, and He has. And when I'm saying the rest, you know, the Lord gave me a beautiful vision probably about three weeks ago now, and I woke up with this that we had all been resurrected and we were in the kingdom of heaven and we were all celebrating. And I just happened to look down and I saw one, it was like a shadow, like a, you know, how you look through, a, a, there was a a shadow of existence on the on earth. And I could see this from the heavenly realm. And I was like, wait, someone is still there. And so I said, use me, Lord, I'll go. And at that moment, immediately, I was back down there. I was able to minister Jesus and take them up. And, we, and there was nobody left. There was no one else left on this earth. So I know with that vision there, I'm holding on to that, that all men will be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. No one will be left behind. That's the revelation that the Lord showed me. And now I'm able to disconnect myself from my family members, from my friends, because all I do now is preach thy word only, and they shall be healed. They shall be saved. So when we come here and I hear our beautiful sister ministering Jesus, it's only going to edify me, to build me up. You know, that's what she was sharing with us about First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3, is to keep God and protect the word that's in our heart. Thy word have I had in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. See, tears could have come in this morning, even with the, you know, with the, the nephew, I call him a nephew, and with the sister, but there were no tears. There's no tears in heaven. God's only ever, he can't even see the flaws, our daddy. He only sees perfect. He only sees the fruits of the spirit, the nine fruits of the spirit, Galatians 5.22. You know, so immediately when we preach the word of God, the Holy Spirit is able, able to perform that word because he sends the holy angels around them and campers around them, they fear them and deliver them. Yeah, so there was a it was a time for me to um just minister what the Holy Spirit had put on my heart at that time. Jesus loves you. John chapter 3, verse 16. And we don't need man's approval. <laughs> when we minister the word of God, we're not seeking man's approval. All we're doing is we're being obedient to the word of God, we're being obedient to our Father. And in that obedience, we will be blessed, us and our seed. Mainly. Yeah. So God bless you, brethren. I just wanted to share that with you and just honor the word that has been ministered through the Jesus and my sister Sharon. You know, I love listening to the word of God. I always take down the scriptures. So hopefully you guys have also taken down the scriptures to add, you know, to your heavenly accounts as well. And I pray in the name of Jesus that when you hear the voice of God's word, that immediately you are obedient. Yeah. Okay, Daddy, what would you have me do in this matter? He wouldn't give you anything that you could not handle. He'll only give to you what it is that you put onto your heart that he knows that you are comfortable with. But grow and grow quickly. So they portion in um, first, uh, Peter, um, I'll just take us to it. Chapter 2, verse 2. You see, that there is a time to desire the sincere milk of the word that we may grow, grow thereby. And then, when we do grow, strong meat belongs to them that are of full age. That's in um, Hebrews 5, verse 14. I just want to get to that scripture, um, page. First Peter, 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 there it is, chapter 2, verse 2. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. I just want to support the encouragement that our sister said about the four scriptures that have been given to our brethren. That, that's your milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. Bring them forth, minister to them. And minister to us, preach those scriptures. And then Hebrews chapter 5, verse 13 and 14. See, as we keep going, you don't just want to be drinking milk, you want to get, you know, get into the heartier 
<laughs> you know, the more heartier uh, meal, if you like. I like the heartier meal too. Um, you want to change, change up, <laughs> change up your, your eating plan. <laughs> Add to your faith. <laughs> so in um, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 13 and 14, 13 says, for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. When we take our eyes off Jesus, the winds become boisterous and the sea becomes rough. When we keep our eyes on Jesus, the wind, the, the, the Lord speaks to us, Mark 4, 39. He, he, he wakes up because he's the resurrection and the life. He wakes up and he says, peace be still. See, so you're in the word and you're out of the word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Stay in the word. Because when you're in the word, there is no world. There's no room for um, destruction. Because the Lord sent his word, Psalms 107 verse 20, to heal us and then to deliver us. Praise God. So yeah, um, Jesus truly is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And you know, the parable again is this earthly saying of the spiritual meaning. That seed there, this is how important it is. The seed is the word of God. So one seed at a time, just keep planting it in. Plant the seed in. Water it by speaking it, meditating, confessing, professing, preaching, sharing, and fellowship, and God will bring the increase in John 3 30. He will increase in your life. The flesh will decrease. Hallelujah. And then what will happen is the Lord will renew, the word will renew our mind. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Praise the Lord. And then your tongue will confess life. And the environment will change immediately. And we will be running in the blessing. Yeah. So that's what I saw today. And I'll, I'll, I'll go back and follow these, you know, who the Lord had blessed us with. I'll follow them up. So praise the Lord, brethren. God bless you. God bless you, my dear. <laughs> I had a wonderful um, prayer come in this morning and I prayed and it says to me, God, you are the Lord over everything, both unseen and unseen. You alone are the one with power over life and death. Help increase my own faith by the Holy Spirit. I believe that you can do all things that are not, or that are you care for me. Help me be live with your faith. Oh, help me live by faith and believing about you and your scriptures, in Jesus' name, amen. And then my today's scripture was once, Auntie Sharon did say in her reading this morning, was John 11, 25 and 26. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, through he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. That was a beautiful reading. Thank you, Auntie Sharon. I loved it in every word. Thank you, Jesus. These last couple of days, actually this whole holy week, I've been staying in the word, been reading every morning, every night. And within this holy week, I've had three of my friends come to me as well and shared a couple of their struggles that they've been going, going through. And I straight away told them the word, Jesus, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. This is how I can only help you. If he has saved me, he can save you. If he can help me, he can help you. And I encouraged them to, to pray and to read his word. And they said to me, oh, I've been praying, I've been praying. Just like I'm not being heard. And I said, he does hear every prayer. He does. He does, but he needs you to put him first on your heart, sow the seeds of scriptures on your heart. And I've been trying to tell them, like, I don't know how to explain because it's, it's wonderful. 
he's wonderful. I really don't know how to explain, but for you just to read the Bible, <laughs> read his word, read it, seek him first before anything in this world, anything before who you have near you or the world or the environment that you're in. Because I can tell you now, without him, I wouldn't have gotten where I am today. Without my brethren, where I fellowship with them, where they share scriptures, where they share their stories, I wouldn't be where I am today. And I thought, I was saying to myself, please, Jesus, before they even, even carried on with their message, I said, what do you have? What scripture can I preach to them today? And I shared the scripture with two of my friends. I told them Proverbs 3, 5, 6, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct their paths. I said to one of them, I said, sow that on your heart. Sow that. Because I have, I've gone to him first. I've leaned onto him first. And my path is clear. I look upon every morning and I seek him first. I pray and I thank him. I always thank him for everything. The house over I live underneath, the food I eat. Just because he will give the food the next hour I'm supposed to eat. He looks after my house so I can still sleep in my house, have some warmth in my house, thank him. And then I said to her, because she kept trying her best to, to give me that understanding in the world. And like you have said, minister the world because this, the Bible, is our world. Is our world for us. So I was telling her, please forgive me. But what you say to me, I do not agree because the Lord is my agreement. I agree with what the Lord has to say. And she was like, oh, okay, your path, that's your path, that's your journey, but this is my journey. I said, okay, but you have come to me. You have come to me. And the Lord Jesus Christ has given me scriptures to minister this to you. You need saving. I need you to resurrect to the Lord Jesus Christ. I need you to seek him first before you come to me. And then she goes, oh, but I need help. I need, it feels like I can't speak to anyone. And in my heart, I did have that little giggle on us. And <laughs> there was always someone that hears you. There's always someone that this you can speak to. Because I speak to him every day. I don't need, no, just that. Yes, we do sometimes need that mankind, that human form speak. But not for me anymore. Not anymore. I speak to the Lord Jesus Christ and I'll be answered. And it's answered in the scriptures today. So I thank you for that. I love how we come against Yes, We may not um, come every day, but this is how you have taught us. Just because we're not in fellowship, you fellowship within yourself. You have your time and you fellowship with the Lord. And I love that very much. Because I have my times and I'm like reading my today's scriptures. I'm like, oh, is that right, Lord? Okay, I'll get up and I'll go do that even though I don't want to. But I will, and I will try. I don't like that. I've never done that before, but I will try. And when I tried, it was like, okay, this is a new path for me. This is a bit out of the my life I used to live. I'm changing for the better, and I love that. So even though he knew I was once in, in that environment of becoming a demolition girl, he has another path for me to handle food. And I love that because I love my kai. <laughs> I love my kai. So I'm going to try a new new job. I've been there too long. He wants me to try food. So I'm going to go on to the food. But I did ask him, please look after my puku, my lord. Please, don't let it go, momo, nah. <laughs> please, my lord. Thank you, Jesus. And I love that. I love that, that, you know, people come to me and want to, want to hear my scriptures. Someone on my heart. But when they try their best to feed the devilness to me, I'm like, kapot, karera. Hmm. Jesus, take that away. Let us read your scriptures, please, loud and clear, over and over again. So thank you for that. And that was my little journey for my holy week. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. It's so beautiful to hear your heart. You know, I love hearing the scriptures on our brethren's heart. That's what excites me. It excites me because that's my Jesus, you know, that's my Jesus and that's my Jesus, you know. I, 
so you know it's it's beautiful um invite you know and, and praise the lord you know the lord's not going to send anybody to you. if they're looking for jesus and they come to you praise the lord they've been sent from our daddy that he's answered their prayers yeah. but also he's um you know just bring them through sis add them add them you can add them tell them you know come to fellowship you don't have to sh share anything just come and listen changing their environment hey eh? because the word will always you know, new ones that come in, the Lord will always bring them to a place of um, of peace. You know, peace, of satisfaction, of um, to show them the way. If whatever they've been praying for, the Lord will uh, answer them. Like you know, like the Word has already taught us: "Call unto me, and I will answer you, and show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not." You know, um, Jeremiah thirty three three. So yeah, the pray here. You know, the fellowship is open to take anyone the way those that are, you know, the hip, um, that are, you know, um, by the hedges or highway, um, what is it, the byways and the highways, no, the hedges and the or highway and the hedges, you know, he'll bring them in. He'll bring them in. He, none of, so no one gets left or no one gets left out. Yeah. You know, he has many um, able ministers around the, the around the world ready and prepared for his use, you know, to help others, to build them up, to uh, strengthen them, you know, to show them the way through, through the Jesus and yourself and um, sister and I and uh, sister Rahira. And who else is here, brother Dean? And sister Lorna and our sister. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you for sharing. The, the Yeah. The pulpit is still open for anyone else that wants to um, bring a message. You know, what's the Lord been sharing with you um, through by way of the word? You know, how has the word encouraged you? Because if it's if he's encouraged you, he's, he'll encourage us through that same message, through that same journey. So praise the Lord. Come in. Come in if you um, yeah, want to share your scriptures and share your journey. So beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Hey, so, there you are. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got a day off today. Yay. Oh, amen. Amen, sis. Oh. Carry on. Yeah. Oh, when um Sister Ritu was sharing her um testimony this morning, you know, I could hear Pastor Jimmy. Um, I went for a big walk last night after I mowed my lawn and did all that stuff, and I listened to one of his old sermons last night during my walk it was so beautiful to hear his voice again anyway with sister share i heard pastor the first time he um preached this scripture to me ecclesiastes 4 uh, verse 9 and 10 two are better than one because they have good reward for their labor for if they fall the one will lift up his fellow but woe to him that is alone when he falleth for he hath not another to help him and um, that, you know, supports the Isaiah 54 to enlarge the place of thy tent and let them um, stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, um, spare not lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes. Um, yeah, that, that's just, God is not a liar, you know, he, and his promises are just, I'm so grateful to have Jesus on my heart, you know, thy word have I hidden my heart that I might not sin against thee. And um, what say it, the word is nigh, even in thy heart and even in thy mouth. This is the word of faith that we preach. And, um, you know, going back to uh, the sisters sharing Proverbs 3, um, verse 5 to 6, I love that scripture. You know, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not unto thine own understandings, and in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Um, so I do, I acknowledge him in everything that I do. I accept nothing unless I accept it, because man can receive nothing except he receive it from heaven. So anything I do, I accept it from Jesus, you know. Um, and um, what was the other? But he's, I love my journeys with him every day, every day. Um, Second Peter verse 3, verse 9. I always think of you with this one, Sister Sharon. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. Some men count slackness, but it is long suffering, meaning he's patient toward us, not willing that, that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. 
you know, 2 Timothy verse 2 to 3, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth, you know, and hearing again John chapter um, 8 verse 31 and 32, you know, if you continue in my word, then I be my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Um When you sit down in the word, you know, the whole and let the Holy Spirit direct you, you know, to, to the words and the scriptures. Um, you know, you have that real sense of peace. And, you know, Jesus promised us that peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, is what I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And, you know, there are times when you get that, whoo, you know, and then you remember Jesus going, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. You know, um, God is a spirit and they that worship him must spirit, worship him in spirit and in truth. This is why things are possible with God but are impossible with men. Be spiritual. Understand the words in a spiritual sense, you know. Um, oh, yes, Mark chapter 12, verse 29 to 31. Um the Lord thy God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than this. You know, that's easy to do. You love him first. Everything is perfected. How do you find him? Through Jesus Christ. You know, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, you know. Um, yeah, like he said, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. For the thief come, cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Jesus is the good shepherd and the good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. Praise the Lord, you know, um, as some of you know, I had heart surgery, uh, sorry, brain surgery a few years ago, and my psychologist was so thankful when I said, she said to her, oh, meditation is really good, and I said, oh, well, I've become a Christian, and I love my Bible, and you know, she could not challenge that, she said, I'm going to, she said, Knowing that you have the Bible and you have Jesus on your heart, I know you're going to be all right. She said, I know I'm supposed to lecture you scientifically. She said, but there is no greater power than the power of Jesus and his meditation. And she's right. How can you be wrong? <laughs> How can you challenge, you know, our maker, you know? And um, I, will, I continued in this path and I will continue in it because that, that, I'm never lonely since the Lord's come into my life. If uh, any tribulation, Jesus said that in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. So when you trust him, you know you're not meant to feel down like that. He's, that doesn't come from God. You can rebuke that feeling in the name of Jesus. And then, you know, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. God wants us to be happy. He loves us so much. Jesus loves us so much. We're not meant to feel down that way. So rebuke that feeling because it's not of God. Put him back on your heart and you will be of good cheer. You'll share that same cheer with Jesus, you know. It's, um, so beautiful and I'm really, really thankful for it and apply it to everything that I do, you know, the you might be in a competition and you don't win and, you, you know, you get upset. You, it wasn't important for God that you win that. There's something better for him that he's got in mind for you. Let it go. You know, that was part of the journey. It's, it's, it, he's always got something better for you. Um, another one that I really love, it's been another one of my favorites, is John chapter 20, verse 29. And Jesus said unto Thomas, because Thomas didn't want to believe that Jesus had risen again. And he said, unless I see the piercing in his hands and the piercing in the side. Anyway, Jesus came to him and just said um, and showed him and Thomas believed and Jesus said unto him Thomas and I say you know when he says Thomas Lorna anyone who's skeptical any of us because thou hast seen me thou hast believed 
but blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Every day I believe in Jesus. I believe he is our Lord. I believe that he is our, he reconciles us to our heavenly father. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the father but by Jesus. Praise the Lord, he's made a way for us. Thank you. Thank you for loving us, loving us so much. God is love and he wants us to love one another as he loved us and Jesus showed us the way and was an example that we should do as he has done. Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it every day. Thank you. Thank you for letting me share. God bless you, sis. Thank you for sharing. My heart is indicting a good matter. I speak of the things that I've made as touching the King, King Jesus. Yeah, my tongue and your tongue and our sister's uh, brethren's tongues here are the pen you know, of the ready writer. And, you know, it's, it's beautiful because we're writing we're writing our future. Mm -hmm. That's why the Lord said in me is life, and the life is the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. See, there's nothing darkness can put out if we're speaking life, life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the Lord has shown his word upon our path. So whatever the desires of our heart are, you know, and praise the Lord, uh, as long as they're good and acceptable in his sight, which have all men to be saved, that's us. The Lord mm -hmm. is wanting to save us from the untruths, all the, um, you know, the areas that we thought were of him, but they're actually not. Mm. Yeah. Mm. He's, you know, he's shone that light and that's what we're speaking forth. What is it that we want him to do for us? You know, that's why we have the conversation with him every morning, every second, you know, every time we're meditating, you know, we, we're talking to the Lord and he's talking to us and he's saying, you know, what is it that um, you want me to do for you? For with man, this is impossible. And, I, you know, he's saying, I don't care how impossible that it may seem to you. He says, but with me, all things are possible, whatever the desire is of your heart. You know, all things are possible. And that's the, you know, um, uh, Isaiah 54, 2 eh? you know, um, string, opening the curtains of our habitation, length, you know, just bringing more, more truth and more love and more peace and more life in. Because there's so much he wants to give us mm. of his government and peace shall be no end. See, whatever the desires are, he's not limited. And yes, yeah, so I bless you, sis. Thank you for those beautiful scriptures. You know, I love hearing the word of God through our brethren. And and you know, as we as we continue in his word, then he's just gonna open up, open up the scriptures. He's going to show us things. Honestly, the things that he's been showing us, man, I yeah, praise the Lord, there'll be a season when I can, I know, I know we can bring it out. Praise the Lord, you know, I, I, I get excited because that's what they, this is the day that the Lord has made. Hey, every day we wake up and it's like, wow, daddy, you know, every day you wake up, sis, and I see these, um, you know, beautiful sunsets, mm -hmm. you know, your pictures that you, that I see, you know, all the sunsets, not one of them are the same or ever mm -hmm. will be. They're unique. You know, and those things we haven't seen before. So every one, every day is a new day. Every vision that we see is a new vision. Every, um, you know, every thought that ex that uh, exalts itself, every thought which is of God that exalts itself is a blessed thought of our daddy. You know, mm -hmm. and and so that's our growth. We he's he's getting us to grow more and more. And as we share one with another, then we see what that person is saying, you know, and we go, yeah. oh, praise the Lord, I receive that, and I'll take those scriptures and I'll start sowing them for me to to hold on to that vision that, uh, you know, and then the Lord gives us more, gives us so, so over, much more. Over we're a cup all, of those. <laughs> yeah, we're all so important to our daddy. Every one mm. of us is a gem. Every one of us is a, is a special gem, and we have yeah. special gifts and talents that every one of us is so important to our daddy, and we need yeah. one another as our daddy needs us because he gave us one son, or he gave the world one son so that he could get many more back, you know, many more back. So, yeah, God bless you, sis. Thank you for sharing. Thanks. Anyone else want to have a, have a share?
Sister must be resting. Sister Rani, why are you resting? That's what I thought she was doing, resting under the anointing. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Praise the Lord. My sister, if you want to close us in prayer, praise the Lord. You know, I just want to acknowledge the word in our sister Lorna. Beautiful ministry. So. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. You know. That's exciting. It's exciting. You know, just say so, so thankful that, um, you know, the brethren have taken up the word of God, taken up our Jesus. Yeah. That's exciting. That's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Without me or nothing. Um, all right. Well, let us pray, brethren. Thank you, Father. Father, we are thankful this morning and we come before your throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. Baby, we thank you because your word has taught us this morning about the importance of your word. First and foremost, that the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Daddy, I'm blessed this morning to be able to hear the word being ministered to us. And I'm thankful, Father God, that your word says, so shall your word be. Now it's our word. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto us void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing we to its sin. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for sending love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faith, temperance, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law to all of our family and all of our brethren. Father, I bless you in the name of Jesus that you've um, allowed us to enlarge our tent as well, and that you've seen that there is room to grow, Father God, that we may... Um, uh, not only desire after the sincere milk, milk of the word, Father God, but also for the strong meat, meat now. And that when we grow, Father God, we'll put away childish things. That the word has taught us that we're to here in this place. We have been trained up, trained up in, you know, to train up a child in the way that they should go and that when they're old, they'll not depart from that. And we've seen that, Father God. Every day we minister your word and the Holy Spirit performs that word. We're grateful because the holy angels are working for us. So we're thankful, Father God, that we have become mature, that every day, if we continue in your word, then we the suffers indeed, and we'll know the truth, and the truth shall make us free. That we acknowledge you, our Holy Spirit, the giver of the gift. You, our Jesus, gave us the gift of eternal life, and that you gave us also the Holy Spirit. For how be it, when he, the Spirit of truth, will come, he will guide us into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear. That shall he speak and he will show us things to come. So Holy Spirit will continue to feed you this morning. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, has blessed us with the seeds this morning, which is the word of God. So we will, Father God, hide those words in our heart. By word have we hid in our heart that, they, that we might not sin against thee. That Father God, in this, Psalms 119 verse 9 says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? by taking he thee to according to thy word. And I thank you, Father God, for that beautiful gift. I also thank you, Lord, that you taught us the, the word this morning, that the seed is the word of God. And I thank you, Father God, that we are the sower. We're the sower of the word. So I give you thanks, honor, and glory, Daddy, for this teaching. I thank you, Lord, that you made us in your image, Father, according to John chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. That God is the spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And today, Father God, is the hour. For this is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, as we depart this afternoon, this morning and this afternoon, um, to go about our, our day, Daddy, I thank you, Lord, that um, the Holy Spirit will be with us, will be led and guide, guided by the word of God. I thank you, Lord, for your holy angels along the roads as we travel. Um, and also around our homes, Father God, bless the Lord, you use the angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word, that will be there up in their hands, and they shall so put against the stone. Father, I thank you, Lord, for continuing to bless us and blessing our children. I thank you, Father God, that the wealth is laid up for us. And I bless you and praise you, Father God, for the maximum harvest this year that, is, that has been prophesied from many from many preachers and, and righteous men, Father God. So we enter into the righteous man's reward and a prophet's reward, Father God. So we also receive their prophecy over us in our lives too. I thank you, Father God, that we bring you all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, he would say, the Lord of hosts, said, I'll, I'll, if I would not open, if you, our daddy, will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings 
that they shall not be room enough to receive it. Father, you've taught us, given it will be given unto you in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. But with the same measure you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. That daily our God shall supply all our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That if we seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things shall be added unto us. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. We give you thanks, honor, and glory, Father God. I thank you, Lord, that you'll be glorified within us. I thank you, Lord, that you'll continue to use us mightily for the winning of souls. That, Father God, that through us we're able to minister for those that are there yet to receive you. Receive your Son, Jesus Christ, as their personal Lord and Savior. We will teach them by way of the Word of God's salvation. For neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among you whereby we must be saved. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow things in heaven, things on earth, and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God our Father. That if they shall confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, they are saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Father, heal our tongue. I pray, Father God, that you've given us the ability to be able to preach life. Death and life is in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. I thank you, Father God, that our hearts is inviting a good measure. I speak of those things that I have made touching the, the king. My tongue is a pen of a ready writer. So I thank you, Father God, for our Jesus. Then see Jesus to the Word of Life Fellowship. Brethren, children, grandchildren, and see to come. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you'll know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I thank you, Father God, for this beautiful message. Continue to bless my sister Sharon and all that she is believing for, Father God. I pray it is done for you by our Father which art in heaven. I thank you, Father God, that you've positioned her well to be the leader of this, of this fellowship and at the head, Father God. And we give all honor and glory for, to, to um, the gifts and talents that you've blessed her with, Father God. I'm thankful, Lord, that as, as, as our brethren of the Word of Life Fellowship will continue to lift her up and to commend her and her family to you afresh, day by day, that, Father God, we are able to come in and sit at the feet of Jesus and grow thereby. Father, hear our prayer. We are thankful, truly thankful for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Bless you. I had, an I had an interesting dream that I'll talk about to you later too. I'm going to write it down and study it up by way of the word first. Okay. Yes. Okay. No. Uh, all right then. Bye. God bless you. Bye. 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 Bye.